Welcome to episode 13 on the law rapport. In this episode, I would like to discuss special defenses in criminal law. The criminal procedure rules 2021 of the Turks and Caicos Islands Rule 2 states that special defense includes the defenses of alibi and fitness to plea, automatism, insanity, atrophious acquit and atrophious convict. In a previous episode, I dealt with the defenses of alibi, insanity, and automatism as general defenses. In my respectful view, general defenses are those defenses which arise from specific characteristics of the defendant or the circumstances of the offense. Therefore, without being critical of the drafters of the criminal procedure rule, I remain resolute that the defense of automatism, insanity, and alibi are general defenses in criminal law, and further, the defense of insanity gave rise to the issue of fitness to plea, and it is just repetitive or redundant to have it listed as a defense in its own right. The specific special defenses that I wish to discuss are those specific to the offense of murder. If any of these defenses, when raised, is proven, it will have the effect of reducing the crime of murder to that of manslaughter. In other words, they are considered partial defenses. The elements required to convict a defendant of murder will all be present, but the charge itself will be reduced if any of the three available defenses are successfully argued. These defenses differ from all other defenses under the criminal law as they do not apply to all crimes. They are only specific to the offense of murder. The first special defense that I would like to discuss is the defense of diminished responsibility. This defense exists solely for the offense of murder. Diminished responsibility is set out in Section 2 of the UK's Homicide Act of 1957 as amended by Section 52 of the Coroners and Justice Act of 2009. To rely on the defense, the defendant must be able to demonstrate the following an abnormality of mental functioning caused by a recognized medical condition which provides an explanation for the defendant's acts or omission in being party to the killing, which substantially impaired his or her mental ability to either understand the nature of his or her conduct, form irrational judgment, or exercise self-control. In the Turks and Caicos Islands, the offences against the Person Ordinance Chapter 3.08 deals with the defence of diminished responsibility. Section 4, subsection 1 states, 
where a person kills a his party to a killing of another, he shall not be convicted of murder. If he was suffering from such abnormality of the mind, whether arising from a condition of arrested or retarded development of the mind or other inherent causes or induced by disease or injury, as to substantially impair his mental responsibility for his acts in doing or being a party to the killing. Subsection 2 continues, and a charge of murder, it shall be for the defense to prove that the person charged is by virtue of this section not liable to be convicted of murder. And again, when the word proved is used, it is the a burden which we discussed earlier, a reverse burden, an evidential burden, where the defendant must discharge this burden to be determined by the child judge and a balance of probability. So the defendant need not prove beyond reasonable doubt. All the defendant needs to do is to produce evidence so that the trial or that the trial judge could assess this evidence and a balance of probability and make a determination or not whether the defendant has discharged his or her evidential burden. Subsection 3 continues, a person who, but for this section, would be liable, whether as principal or otherwise, to be convicted of murder, shall be liable instead to be convicted of manslaughter. So the defense is a partial defense that only reduces murder to that of manslaughter. Subsection 4 continues, the fact that one party to a killing is by virtue of this section not liable to be convicted of murder shall not affect the question whether the killing amounted to murder in the case of any other party to it. So in a case where there are joint charge where two or three persons have been charged with the offense of murder, if one of the defendants raise the defense of diminished responsibility, even if it is successful, that in no way affects the case against the other defendants who have not relied on that defense and they could be liable to be convicted for murder even if the defendant who raises or who raised the defense of diminished responsibility is successful. And subsection 5 continues, where a person is charged with murder, a plea of guilty to manslaughter under the provisions of this section and the grounds of diminished responsibility shall not be accepted by the court. So, one who raises this defense must establish this defense by producing evidence and there must be a trial. And so a guilty plea would not be accepted where the basis of the plea would be that the person is suffering from some disease of the mind and as a result he relies on the defense of diminished responsibility to a plea of guilty. There must be a trial and this must be fleshed out a trial. The second special defense that I would like to bring to your attention is that of loss of control. 
the defense of laws of control came into effect in the United Kingdom or in England and Wales by virtue of Section 54 of the Coroners and Justice Act of 2009. And it came into force in October 2010 or 2010. The defense of laws of control was introduced in response to concerns in relation to the defense of provocation. So before the introduction of the defense of laws of control, the defense at common law was the defense of provocation. And by virtue of the introduction of the defense of laws of control in England and Wales, the defense of provocation has been abolished. The defense of provocation had become problematic and was subject to much consideration by the courts of appeal or by appeal courts. It was believed that the appeal courts were not always consistent in the interpretation and application of the defense of provocation as set out in Section 3 of the Homicide Act of 1957. The defense was also considered to have a gender bias in that it was too favorable to those who killed as a result of losing their temper, which were generally male defendants, but did not provide a balanced response to those who kill out of fear of serious violence and those who are often women experiencing domestic violence. Let me say unequivocally, the position in the talks in Caicos Islands is that the partial defense of provocation is available to a defendant charged with murder. So we still operate at common law because the defense of provocation has not been abolished in the talks of Caicos Islands. Provocation is that which causes, at the time of the act, ordinary persons of average disposition to act rashly or without due deliberation or reflection to act from passion rather than judgment or rather than some judgment. In other words, provocation is something which causes a reasonable person to lose control. The reasonable person tests is simply where if the jury is satisfied that the defendant was provoked, the test to be applied is whether a reasonable person would have acted as the defendant did. And this is an objective test. In a number of leading cases, case of Camplain, the case of Moal, it was held that the judge should direct the jury to consider whether an ordinary person with ordinary powers of self-control would have reacted to the provocation as the defendant did and that no allowance should be given for any characteristics that might have made him or her more volatile than the ordinary person. The third partial defense that will aid a defendant who raises the defense successfully to have the offense of murder reduced to that of manslaughter is the defense of suicide pact. And this is a killing in pursuance of a suicide pack and let me say at the outset that I am not aware of 
this defense been available in the Turks and Caicos Islands because this is not a common law defense and it is not on the statutes of the Turks and Caicos Islands. So this defense will not be available to a person charged for murder in the Turks and Caicos Islands. A person acting in pursuance of a suicide pact between him and another who kills the other or is a party to the other being killed by a third person is guilty of manslaughter and not murder according to section 4 of the Homicide Act of 1957 Finkel and Wales. The defense must prove the existence of a suicide pact as defined at section 43 of the Homicide Act of 1957 and that at the time of the killing the defendant had the intention of dying himself according to section 42 of the Homicide Act of 1957. So there must be a plan that the parties involved in this suicide pact are going to, to kill themselves. And in the event that one or more party survives, then that party could be charged. But he will or she will only be liable to be convicted of manslaughter and not murder. But he must produce evidence. So he has an evidential burden to produce evidence that there was in fact a suicide pack. Once the killing has been proved, the jury must answer the following two questions. Was there a suicide pack? If there was, was the defendant at the time of the killing acting in pursuance of the pack? Did he have the settled intention of dying? in pursuance of it. Proof of a suicide pact is not conditional and proof of a mental abnormality. And this was established in the case of the Queen and Order of 1990. This reverse legal burden under Section 42 is the same as the reverse burden placed on a person who pray in aid the defense of diminished responsibility and it has been ruled to be compatible with the presumption of innocence and this has been established in the case of the Queen and Foy in 2013. I would like to deal very quickly with the doctrines of Ocho for acquit and Ocho for convict. They are common law doctrines rather than defenses that govern criminal trials. Ocho for acquit refers to the fact that a person cannot be put on trial for an offence he has been previously acquitted for and at your fall convict refers to the fact that a person cannot be put on trial for the same offence that he has previously been convicted of. The combination of both doctrines gave birth to the rule against double jeopardy. This rule refers to the fact that a person cannot be tried for the same offense again if previously he has been either convicted or acquitted. However, Part 10 of the Criminal Justice Act of 2003 in England and Wales reform the law 
in relation to double jeopardy by permitting the child in respect of serious offenses where new and compelling evidence has come to light, for example, DNA or fingerprints, or where new witness to the offense has come forward. There are no similar provisions in the laws of the Turks and Caicos Islands. And here is where I wish to conclude on special defenses. And for the usual disclaimer, nothing that I discuss in this episode is legal advice and should be construed as legal advice. For legal advice, please contact a competent attorney of your choice. If you listen to my discussions, I thank you. And if you like what I have said and what I am doing, please leave a comment, make it constructive. If there's things that you think that I can improve, please say so. And I will be happy to look into it. Thank you for listening.